Hey friends and happy Easter. Easter is the time we celebrate the life of Jesus when he was here on earth. Now, in his final days on earth, Jesus knew what was coming. His death on the cross, his burial in a tomb, and his resurrection back to life. It's the stuff we now remember and celebrate as part of the Easter season. Of course, we also celebrate with other things, and some of them are kind of random. There's a lot of Easter traditions out there. My name is Jean, and I remember one that I had to be a part of when I was growing up. Every Easter Sunday, my parents would dress me up in the fanciest dresses, and we would all have to go out in front of our house and take a picture next to this dogwood tree. And I didn't understand why, because I was standing in this dress and it was just itchy and frilly, and I had to wear like an Easter hat and stuff stockings and just fancy shoes. It was just so uncomfortable. I mean, see what I mean? Easter can be a really interesting holiday. And even though I love all the fun and funny traditions around this season, sometimes all the bunnies and candy and crazy outfits and different activities make it difficult to remember what Easter really means for us. And what we're really celebrating at Easter is actually a huge deal. It may be the coolest, craziest, most life-changing thing God has ever done for us. But to really understand that, we've gotta go back to the beginning. When God created us, God loved us so much. The plan was for us to be connected with God no matter what. In fact, the first two people God ever created, Adam and Eve, were so close to God that they actually walked with, talked with, and lived with God every single day until they didn't. You see, Adam and Eve decided to disobey God's only command for them. They were tempted to eat fruit from the only tree in all of creation that God told them to avoid. And when they gave into that temptation, everything changed. Something called sin came into the world. And sin means the things we do that keep us from a close relationship with God. And every single human being since Adam and Eve has dealt with sin in our lives. I mean, think about it. All of us have lied, all of us have cheated, gossiped, or done something we knew wasn't right. We've all made a choice that wasn't God's best for us, and we'll all do it again. But unfortunately, the consequence of sin is that it separates us from God. Adam and Eve's sin thousands of years ago resulted in them being separated from God's presence. But the thing is, that isn't how it's supposed to be. Not then and not now. We were created so we could live in a close relationship with God. God created us because God loves us. Separation was never part of the plan. I mean, think about it this way. Have you ever seen a friendship fall apart? Two people were best friends forever. Then one bad decision changed everything. Now they don't hang out, they don't FaceTime each other, and they avoid each other at school. Even though we understand why they separated, we still know that separation wasn't part of the plan. The same thing is true with God. We all make choices that impact our relationship with God, choices that separate us from God. And no matter how hard we might try, there's nothing we can do on our own to make things right and connect with God. Well, that's where Easter comes in. Even though our situation seems completely hopeless, on the very first Easter, Jesus did something that changed everything for everyone. Something that gives us a reason to hope again. During Jesus' life on earth, he spent his time loving and teaching people about who God is. One of the things Jesus talked about was how to close the gap between us and God. That's good news. The bad news, Jesus had enemies who wanted to prove that nothing about him or his message were what they appeared. There was a group of really important people in Israel who didn't like that Jesus was gaining popularity. After a few years of watching Jesus' following grow, these people had enough. They found a way to arrest him, put him on trial, and somehow convince their local leaders that Jesus deserved to die. What happened next is what we talk about every Easter. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called Place of the Skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Many people hoped that Jesus could somehow make human beings right with God again. But then they watched him hang from a cross, dying for crimes he didn't even commit. I don't know about you, but I think all the hope his followers had was probably crushed in that moment. It must have felt like the chance of Jesus ending our separation from God was gone. But what if Jesus' death 
was actually the solution to that problem. Look at what Jesus said while taking his final breaths on the cross. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Most of Jesus' disciples scattered, but his mother, a few women, and John stayed and witnessed what happened. I have to wonder what his followers surrounding the cross must have thought when they heard those last words. Wait, Jesus, what is finished? Are you talking about your life or something else? Thankfully, because it's been over 2,000 years since all this happened, we now know exactly what he meant. When Jesus said, it is finished, he wasn't talking about his life. He was talking about the plan to end our separation from God. The only one who is capable of finishing that plan is the only one who is perfect, God. This is why God sent Jesus, who was both fully human and fully God to earth. From the beginning, the plan was that Jesus would do something for us that we could never do for ourselves. He would pay for our sins and forgive us of them in order to make us right with God again. Jesus died so nothing could keep us from God anymore. It is the greatest act of love we will ever know. And the best part, Jesus didn't stay dead. Three days after he was brutally killed on a cross, Jesus came back to life. And when he did, it proved that everything he said was true and everything he promised really was finished. You see, Jesus died and came back to life again because he loves you. That's what we're celebrating this Easter. It's what we celebrate every Easter. The love that God had to send his one and only son Jesus to earth to save us from our sins. Jesus died and came back to life again because he loves you. No matter where you are in your faith today or what you believe about God, Jesus and even Easter, I want you to know that this message is for you because God is for you. Jesus died for you. And Easter is all about recognizing and remembering the love God has for for us all. So what do we do with that? Here's where we can start. First, think about what's standing between you and God. The good news is, is that no matter what it is, it is finished. If you've chosen to believe that Jesus is God's son and to trust that his death and resurrection make you right with him, then it is finished. Nothing can separate you from God's love. For some of us, we need to choose to remember. This Easter, we need to remember that Jesus has finished all the work to make up for our sin. For others of us, we need to choose to believe this for the first time. If you choose to believe, you can be confident that you are right with God and nothing can separate you ever again. Why? Because Jesus died and came back to life again because he loves you. I'm not sure what you've grown up thinking about Easter, but the real story behind the season has the potential to change everything for you. Because Easter means everything standing between you and God was taken care of by Jesus because he loves you. I hope that this year, you'll choose to believe the real meaning of Easter and God's love like you never have before. Because Jesus died and came back to life again because he loves you. 